It's time for bookkeeping, beer, and BS. Anyway, I want to I want to get to winter projects and and Dave. I actually, man, do I want to start with Dave on this one? Like winter is just different for you. Um, I got a good winter project. If you don't know what it is, yeah, I I, I, I kind of want to get into like the we use winter even in our home cleaning businesses. January, December is is kind of nutty with the holidays, but even January, February, we get a, a lull in our businesses. And so we use that for different projects. And so I kind of want to talk about the strategy behind that and what we save for that time period and what we're up to. Um, but you don't have as much seasonality, Dave. So let's start with you. What, what, when do you have time to do those projects when you don't have the slow time? Is there a right time to just tackle big projects whenever the hell you want? Well, so my, my next goal is, um, my Denver business. Um, there's an airport in Denver that's humongous and I know it's going out for bid this coming summer. So, um, I've had the airport contract in Phoenix several times for, you know, multiple decades and I know how to bid on government contracts. Um, here's a little secret that anybody who wants to get into government contracts is you go to the city and it's public information. So you say, I want to know who's doing the work at this place. Um, I want to see the current uh, bid. I want to see the current pricing. And it's public information, so they hand it to you. So my, where do you, where do you go to do that? Like city hall or just yep, website? Yep. Or? Yeah, usually it's um, it's purchasing. You go to the purchasing, and and if you ask around, they'll they'll point you in the right direction. Um, but it's something people don't know. Um, it's kind of a mystery. How you know? How do you get these big cover, government jobs? Um, but I'm going to go to Denver um, somewhere in the next month or two, and uh, I'll. I'll knock on the city doors and I'll, I'll get the current bid and see what they're charging. And then I'll start working on my uh, proposal. Um, it's, it's a big job to uh, bid on jobs like that. Um, but that's kind of what I do in my downtime. <laughs> sweet. Sweet. Do you now like that's a project that you would work on. That's kind of a goofy one to delegate unless you've got a really like dialed in salesperson that's been doing it for a while. I think those types of projects, super common that the owner dives into something that big. True. True. Do you have, do you have projects in the business? Um, and maybe you don't have any this year, but, but like a couple, for instance, that we're working on and I'll get to our strategy on it, but like new CRM or new payroll system or, or like implementing new softwares, I should say, just like in general. Yeah, no, we don't have anything like that. You know, we're pretty solid with our CRM. Um, changing CRMs is an absolute nightmare. I was on the phone with a guy from a, uh, Charleston, South Carolina, right before I was on here and he's changing CRMs and I'm like, oof. <laughs> so no, thankfully we're not doing that, but yeah, that would be a great time to do it is when you're sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. Um, it, it like implementing new marketing stuff, I feel like is another, a, another winter time that I, that I assimilate with. Winter yeah. Yeah. I was on, I told you, you gotta, yeah, I told you I was on with a guy from, um, Minnesota earlier today too. And, and he's yeah, like, totally. okay, so let's get started with collaborate. He goes, when do we start? And we decided to get started in December because if you're going to start your marketing right now, by the time March rolls around, um, you should be killing it. Mm -hmm. You know, give it a month or two and, and, and you should be killing it. So yeah, marketing's, you know, if you're going to change your marketing gears or if you're going to put some big effort into something, you know, you got to give yourself a little bit of time to get some traction. Build the runway. Yeah. Um, so, so do you, with projects like that, is there a time of year you target or do you just kind of do it whenever, whenever it comes up and maybe your capacity is available? Yeah, I, I'm pretty free. I don't, I don't work in my, my business too much. Um, if at all, I don't even do payroll anymore, which is really nice. Um, so I'm pretty free to do as I wish. And then in my collaborate, um, we do have a lot of systems and you've met some of their guys that work in our company. They pretty much handle everything. I do the sales calls for collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty free. I'm, I'm pretty pretty available. So I guess when projects come or an idea pops off and that's when I go do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if you don't have like a predictable downtime. Um, I got a couple comments rolling in here and then uh, Sean and Rob, I want to get to you guys. Ryan uh, McGowan says, talk about your vetting process when you onboard new employees. We've done that one a little bit, Rob, I think I had you on and we talked about that. Um, and Sean, you're the, you're the, you've got the mojo on that end. So I'm going to come back to that one. Um, I mentioned earlier how we had this like Indian summer going on here and all of a sudden it's 50 degrees. Literally this morning, 
like I, I, I sent a note yesterday and said like, let's do a, um, and Andy and I had talked about this before. And so we just said like, okay, we got to send an email and like a Facebook post, nothing intensive. Um, and he posted the comments. We just booked up four days, um, literally like, and that's, I don't know, 15, 20,000 bucks worth of revenue. We're doing 5,000 a day probably right now. We don't, we, I think we have more, we had more guys than that. I don't know if we still have, have everybody or not, but, um, man, just an, an email and a hundred dollar Facebook post. Yeah, um, just free advertising, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't know if I call it marketing when it's like our existing client database, but we send them a lot of emails. How many do you think actually get read? Right. And we, we text them and we email them and we'll do voicemail bombs and all the things, but they largely get ignored naturally. And so I don't, I have to, I have to convince myself oftentimes, like it's okay to make to, for me to feel like I'm badgering them because they forgot all about me. They don't even know who the hell I am. It's okay. Like I'll send them another message and they will, they will not be worried about it. Um, I got a quick hitter here, Dave, you might have an opinion on this. I don't. Jason Hefner says he's upgrading his exterior window cleaning game. Any recommendations on water fed pole? Um, I like the zero poles. Zero Um, poles. Yeah. They were very nice. Um, Window cleaning resource sells them mm-hmm. um, about a thousand dollars. They're lightweight. They they last. Um, our guys absolutely destroy any kind of equipment we give them. <laughs> despite, naturally, naturally, despite all the reprimish, recommendations and lashings we give them. <laughs> but the zero poles are fantastic. Um, we use them for our Christmas lights. They're awesome. Yeah, we have used them more for Christmas lights. Then we have for actual window cleaning. Just to like get a strand down and go around a tree or what? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Doing a, doing a, um, nice. Really anything that's taller than me, we're going to use that and, uh, throw, throw the good old elf on it and wrap around the tree. I dig it. I dig it. I, I, I've never used an elf, but I just love, I love it. Yeah. Where can you get an elf? uh, elf? back here. We use, so we use the, the 040 or no, we, I guess we only had part of it or something like that. And we had this tree that was bigger. So we ended up. Oh, so then we use the goat and we use the goat and put the elf in and the, the zero into the goat. And so then I was like, I'm deep sea fishing with this thing. <laughs> I've got like four sections of the goat. I was like, this is where we were. I was like, all right, we're not coming back. We're going to get this done now. And of course you take, you know, from the zero pole, like probably weighs about as much as two sections of the goat. Well, I got like four or five sections of the goat. It was uh, it was some hillbilly redneck looking stuff. That is, I, I I would, I mean, you post a lot of shit on Facebook. Is that out on Facebook, Rob? I want to see that. It, yeah, it's it's on. Uh, it's definitely on YouTube. Okay, okay, might have to yeah. go check that out. For for those that don't know, the goat is like a roof walking system generally. Uh, zero pole obviously is a water fed pole, and then the elf uh, is like a. I picture. Uh, you know, like you see those small airfields and they have like the orange cones where like to show the wind direction, it's kind of like a shortened version of one of those orange cones where it's like a bigger opening on one side and a smaller opening on the other side. And you just like, it's way on the end of a pole and you just walk it around and it feeds your strand up onto the tree. It's, it's like hilariously silly looking and brilliant all at the same time. Hey, who was yep. asking the question about the water fed pole? What was his name? Uh, Jason Hefner was, was throwing that so one. Jason, out. I do have one more recommendation with water fed. Um, you can buy all these systems, all the, you know, filters and all that stuff. It is an absolute nightmare. It's a headache. Um, we just simply rent DI tanks. Um, when you rent DI tanks, you exchange them out. Um, it costs a little bit of money, but you, you don't have water pressure issues. You don't have problems. You're not, you're not showing up at the job and then just shit's going wrong or sideways. Um, that's been a game changer for us. Just where do you, just where do you rent, rent the, the DI tank? Where do you rent the DI tank from? Like a Culligan water uh, yeah. supply. Okay. Yeah. Um, hands down, it saves so much time and energy. Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah. Um, I got it. I want to get back to the projects, uh, but we got one more question here. And I think this is a good one because it goes, it gets us back to the projects. Andy Mashura, who's my business partner in Minneapolis here, said, Dave, how do you organize, plan out, manage that project? So back to the, you know, doing an airport um, as it gets done. So everyone knows what's been done and what still needs to get done. Like while you're there, how do you, how do you coordinate all that shit? Cause I, I feel like if we send three guys and uh, like, I'm, I don't, 
This is going to sound like I'm making fun of Andy or something. I just, when I, when I was more in the day-to-day stuff of our window cleaning business, it was like, if I had three guys on a project, I couldn't keep them straight. Um, You know, it's just like, they were cleaning behind each other and they were stepping on each other. And this guy grabbed that guy's thing and blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a great question, Andy. Um, System process. Yeah. So it starts off like, you know, you need to set your expectations when you start. So when we have guys work at the airport, you know, they have to be background checked or whatnot. So I tell them, I expect more out of them. I have a meeting before every service. I'm like, I expect more out of every single one of you guys, you know, I'm paying you. I give them like three to $5 bonus while they're working out there. And then when the project's done under the right amount of man hours, that's in our budget, I give them all literally one to $3,000 bonuses for getting the job done. Right. So they're excited about being there. They know I expect more and then they have to produce. Um, and then it's, you know, it's, it's just getting guys to work together. But guess what? If you're not pulling your weight, get out of here. I'm going to get somebody else. So they are motivated more financially than, than, than anything else. 